Hello and welcome to the channel. Today's video is going to be talking about an open source VTX firmware called OpenVTX. The lead dev on this project is Jai Smith, who is also one of the main devs of the Express LRS project. And the idea is to provide a highly controllable, fully functional video transmitter firmware. Currently, this is the video transmitter which is fully compatible with the firmware. This is an EWRF E7082VM. Now this is the version 2. The version 2 has up to 250 milliwatt output power on the standard firmware. Utilizing OpenVTX you can actually get an output power of over 400 milliwatt. Additional to the boost in the output power, you actually get a few nice features. You get a video transmitter that is compatible with both smart audio and the tramp protocols. One is the granular power levels, so you don't have to use the specified power levels of 25, 200, whatever the milliwatt is that the manufacturer decided to use. You can actually specify in your VTX configuration, the output power levels that you actually want to use. One of the other cute features that can be used by particularly racers is a race mode. And what the race mode does is to start the device in pit mode and restrict the output power to 25 milliwatt. This is also a great option for lightweight builds as the VTX is both tiny and very light. I mean, even with the little whip antenna here, we're still looking at less than two grams. And without the antenna, it's 0.9 grams. The dimensions of the VTX are 14 mil by 15 mil by a little under three mil. Aside from the VTX, to get the firmware on, you're going to need an ST-Link and a couple of pieces of software. You'll need the ST-Link utility, and this is used for the initial flashing of either the bootloader or the firmware directly, which I'll go into later. You're going to need Visual Studio Code, the platform IO IDE within Visual Studio Code, the ST-Link utility, and then of course you're going to need your flight control software, so beta flight. The steps are essentially connect the ST link to four pins on the VTX, the five volt, the ground, and then the clock and DIO pins. Okay, once you have the pins soldered up and connected to the ST link, DIO, ground, clock, and five volt pins, then you're ready to start the flash. You basically have two options. You can either simply just flash the firmware, or if you feel you're going to want to update the firmware as and when new versions are released, which probably does make sense in the case of a project like this, where the likelihood is something will change. You can flash a bootloader using the ST link, and once the bootloader has been flashed, you will then use beta flight pass through in a similar way that Express LRS does it to apply the actual firmware itself onto the computer now. And we'll go through the steps over there of how to set the project up and flash the firmware. On the computer, as mentioned, we're gonna need a few pieces of software to get everything set up. First thing you're going to need is the ST-Link utility for your ST-Link USB device. So I'll pop a link to this and all the other tools in the description. Simply so come here and grab the ST-Link utility and install it. Once that's installed, then we need to set up Platform I.O. So if you go to the Platform I.O. website, there are instructions very simply download and install Microsoft Visual Studio Code 
And once that's installed, open up Visual Studio Code and you'll be presented with a screen similar to this. You then need to go to the extensions, so this on the left hand side, and you need to search for the platform IO IDE here and install it. So you should just see an install button here where I've got uninstall because I've already installed it. Now there are a couple of prerequisites for it, uh, which you may or may not already have on your machine. There will be a notification in the bottom right that will guide you on what is needed. But one key component you will need to install if you haven't already is Python. So just go to the Python website and download the latest version. Once, the, once that's installed, you may need to reload Visual Studio Code and hopefully then Platform IO will not complain about anything missing and will be visible in the menu on the left hand side. Another optional you may want to use is Git to just clone the repositories from GitHub. Again, you may or may not have this already. Uh, I'm using Windows, so I'm using Git for Windows on my machine and that's how I obtained the firmwares. However, you don't need it. You can just simply download from the repo as a zip file and extract that to a location on your PC instead. So whichever method you choose, the next step is going to be to obtain a copy of the repo. Again, as mentioned before, there are two different repos, one for the bootloader and one for the firmware itself. You can simply just use the VTX firmware build and flash that and then you'll have a working VTX. However, the preferable option is to download and flash the bootloader first, and then flash the VTX firmware via Betaflight pass-through. It will just allow you to keep the firmware up to date on the VTX if there are any changes to it, any features added, any bug fixes, etc. Without having to take apart your quad or plane and get to the CLK and DIO pins. I've just cloned both repos and pop them in a folder on my machine. First things first, open up the ST-Link utility and we're going to need to prep the VTX in order to be able to flash anything to it. So I'm just going to plug in my ST-Link now and simply go to the target menu and option bytes. You need to make sure readout protection is disabled. It will be enabled when you first connect it. I've just disabled it previously for this one. As, as well as disabling readout protection, you want to tick these three option bytes and then hit apply. You will more than likely see this error. Don't worry about that, you can continue and it's quite expected. Into Visual Studio Code now and you'll want to open the folder for the firmware and or bootloader. Now, I like to add them both to a workspace so I can flick between the two. So I like to add a folder to workspace through the file menu, go to the folder, open the bootloader folder and add that to the workspace. Okay, and then whilst we're here, I'll also open the VTX as well. Now actually, one thing to note here, you will want to just open the SRC or source folder rather than the root of the OpenVTX. So again, we'll just add that to the workspace. Okay, with both the bootloader and the VTX firmware in your workspace. Move over to the platform IO menu and you'll see the different options for that project. Now I've currently got the bootloader loaded. If you want to switch between the two, if you click down at the bottom here, you can pick the project itself. So if I wanted to flash the firmware straight away without using the bootloader, I would simply go to the project in this list and then here you can simply build and upload the firmware. I'm going to do the bootloader first and do the flashing using the pass-through method. So I'm going to go back to my bootloader and click the build button. And as you can see here down at the bottom, it just takes a few seconds and you have built the firmware. Once it's built, you're going to then upload it. So hit the upload button and all being well, that's the, you'll get a successful response 
and that is now the bootloader uploaded to the VTX. With that on, we're going to need to now connect the VTX to your flight controller in order to proceed with the pass-through flashing of the VTX. If you just flash the firmware, then you'd be done now. But what you can't do is flash the bootloader and then the firmware using your ST-Link utility because flashing the VTX firmware will overwrite the bootloader as well. With the bootloader on, the next thing you'll want to do is flash the firmware. And to do that, we're going to use the Betaflight pass-through method. I have a flight controller here that I'm going to use for this purpose. In order to flash using the pass-through method, you'll need to connect three pins from the VTX to the flight controller. You'll need to use the 5 volt and ground as before, but also this time you'll need to use the smart audio pin. You don't need to use the CLK or the DIO pins once you've got the bootloader on. Of course you can connect the video pin if you're going to be using this with the flight controller that you're connecting it to anyway. Once connected to the flight controller, the first step you're going to want to do is apply the VTX tables taken from the OpenVTX GitHub, which I'll link below. And I believe that you need to initially use the Smart Audio protocol instead of the Tramp protocol to do the flashing. Once you've got the flashing done, you can use Tramp after that. That of course may change with updates to Betaflight, but at the time of recording, that is my understanding of the process. So I'll connect this up and we'll go back over to the computer and carry on with the rest of this. With the VTX connected to the flight controller, you will need to set up the port for smart audio and also set up the VTX tables. If I go to the ports tab, it's already set up for me from previously. Mine is UART3. Once you've configured the port, move over to the CLI so that you can configure the VTX table. So on the OpenVTX wiki, there are the VTX tables. Just copy that and, and paste into the CLI, hit save. With the VTX table imported, you can see here is an example of how you can configure your power levels. So here we've got 14 dB is actually 25 milliwatts. 20 dB, 100 milliwatt, 26 dB, 400 milliwatt. If we wanted 200, it would be 23, because every time you go up in three, you're doubling the output power in milliwatts. The labels themselves are obviously inconsequential, but they will show you on your OSD what power level you've got. The RCE is the race mode that I've talked about, and zero is obviously pit mode. With that, your flight controller configuration is done. You can disconnect from beta flight and move back over to Visual Studio Code. Down at the bottom, we're going to move over to the VTX firmware. And as you see here, there are different options. If you're going to flash it directly using the ST link, this is the one you're going to select. Because we've already put the bootloader on, we're going to use the pass through. Build the firmware as we did before with the bootloader. With a successful build, you now need to upload the firmware. So if you just hit the upload button, you should see the LED on the VTX flash as it uploads. This takes a minute. Whilst we're waiting for this, I'll just explain how I'm powering my VTX. Now, because I'm not using a flight controller connected to a quad, I'm still powering my VTX through the ST-Link. If you had it in a quad or a plane, you could connect a LiPo. Basically, anything you can do to get the 5 volts to the VTX. And there you have it. After you've completed all of these steps, you'll now have a very capable VTX. If you do have any questions, of course, believe, leave them in the comments below, but also look at joining the Discord for the project. Again, I'll link that in the description. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please give it a like, and please consider subscribing. But that's all for now, so cheers for watching.